today's long-awaited video, we will be discussing ancestral healing. So let's start with the Chief Warrior Elder and see where he takes it from there. Hi, I am the Chief Warrior Elder. I'm going to just start by discussing ancestral lines and imprints on the earth because that is what we work with the most. My Divine Justice Warriors work with ancestral lines as well. They work with healing them. They work with helping you heal them. Same as Truly Harmonious Connection Warriors, they work with them too. They work with helping you better understand how your ancestors can influence your present life. The ancestral lines on the earth are imprints and ley line marks that influence the polarity and dimensional frequency of the beloved earth. If certain ancestors in your family or in someone else's family have done bad things in the past, those marks are left on the earth. All the bad acts that have happened, all the wars, all of those things leave marks on the earth. And if your ancestor contributed to it, that leaves a mark on your ancestral line. What is different between imprints, ley lines, and ancestral lines? Imprints are not necessarily permanent. They can be removed easier. Ley lines are things that grow and develop with you and can be cleansed, but they are never removed. They are permanently there. It's just what frequency they are at that differs. Ancestral lines are tethered to you. They're tethered to your family. And if your family start, stops producing uh, physical forms, starts stops producing children, and the ancestral line ends, it ends. And that line just becomes a mark on the earth that someone will have to clear and cleanse if it wasn't positive. If there, there are positive ancestral lines in the earth that are tethered to families and groups of people who have done many positive things for the collective good, that's good to have on the earth. The ones we're working on healing are pain, trauma. If you're looking to this video, if you're looking to heal your ancestral lines, it's probably because you've experienced some trauma, some bad things have happened in your family, or you just want to know if there's anything negative there. It's all about healing and removing the negative blocks from the ancestral lines so that it may flow positively. And the generational cycle breakers, which are a lot of beautiful souls of all different star origins and purposes, that they come to specific families that need help in breaking cycles. How you can heal your ancestral lines, a great way to do that is break the toxic cycles. That's how you start the healing. If you are in a place where you are repeating the patterns of those who came before you, the negative toxic patterns, you're not going to be able to heal the ancestral lines because you're not breaking them. You, you breaking one, one person breaking one cycle in one family can do a lot of good. Let me explain a little further. If you are breaking cycles in your family, you are the only person doing it, you are still doing a lot of good because it takes one light to remove the darkness. But you have to be very conscious about it. You have to be doing it all the time. And you cannot let those toxic habits come back into your life. You have to be very aware of it and truly become a different person from those who came before you in everything that you do. That is very important. So the first step, the very first step, is evaluating your ancestral lines, evaluating your family, and you can do that by looking to the family around you and seeing what the toxic cycles are. Is it abuse? Is it uh, manipulation? Is it gaslighting? Is it harassing? Is it bullying? Is it any of these, these negative things that cause harm? Is it sexism? Is it favoritism? Is it the narcissistic golden child? What things, what patterns keep happening in your family and that are happening around you right now that you can break? Is it the shunning when someone does something wrong? How can you break those cycles in your life? Look at those and start to break them. Start to break them by doing the positive opposite. So, for example, if there is shunning, you shun someone when they do something you don't like, when they think differently than you. Instead, embrace the differences. If there's someone in your family that was shunned, reach out to them. Talk to them. Understand why that, that, that happened. Try and understand what 
you got to get a better understanding of your family and why they do the things that they do so that you can heal the ancestral lines. You can't do it with no knowledge of how it works. You're going to have to dig a little deeper into your family history, not the physical history, but the cultural, the traditions, those things, those patterns, those are what you're looking at. You're not looking at what hair color is more dominant in the family. You are looking at what patterns keep coming back into the family. Who has been hurt by the family? Who have you hurt? Who has hurt you? Those emotional things, emotional, mental, spiritual things, even physical things. I mean, physically abandoning somebody. Is that a cycle in your family? You can break those by not abandoning people when they need you. Back to the example of, of the shunning. Also, opening your mind is a great way to break that cycle embracing people's differences into your lives even if they don't think the same way as you welcoming it those are different steps that you can take to truly and fully break cycles breaking cycles isn't the only thing that you have to do to heal your ancestral lines oh there is so much more there's so many things that you can do we have in our realm and we've expl expressed this to the collective before a certain uh, formula you can apply to relationships. I'm going to let the Joybringer elder who helped us create this formula step through and explain more about it, and then hopefully he'll transition over to a truly harmonious connections elf warrior who uh, will explain further what you can do with the formula. So, no man, Joybringer elder, my friend, please step through. Hello! Hi! Ah, so nice to be talking to you all again. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people. Let me explain this formula. And please don't turn off your ears, turn them on. We apply um, what you all call the seven deadly sins to connections. What we mean by that is we apply wrath, sloth, lust, greed, gluttony, jealousy, uh, all of these things that are not 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 positive at all and we apply them to dynamics we apply them to certain things so when i was working with the chief warrior elder back in the the beginning times way 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 ancient times of uh, the earth that you live on now in your lineage history we created this formula because we realized that these concepts these negative concepts wrath and gluttony and greed and pride and all of these things if you apply them to relationships you you see that you can find all seven right there in the most toxic relationship dynamics it takes at least three for a relationship dynamic to fully fall apart so we took that concept and we applied it to help people. We applied it to also help the earth. We look at the ancestral lines and we look at the ley lines and the imprints on the earth and see what one of these seven things influenced it. We don't really like to use the word sins as, as much, but these seven deadly concepts, uh, how did they influence this mark? We look at it, the warriors, they look at it, they look at it, they do. And we, as joy bringers, we try to spread joy and bring in positivity as much as we can, but we know that it takes sometimes a warrior to fully pull and remove the negative pattern. So let's start with greed. Greed can be applied to a relationship dynamic. If someone is greedy for your love, greedy for your time, greedy for things, greedy doesn't necessarily mean money. Keep that in mind. Gluttony is the overindulgence of things. This can be you may have a genetic cycle, people overindulging in material possessions. You have all of these things. Hoarding. Hoarding is gluttony. And that is actually something that can be a cycle in ancestral lines. Hoarding things, hoarding materialism that needs to break. And that just needs to break on a collective level. The hoarding of things, the hoarding of possessions. You all don't need all of these things. What you realize is that your soul is going to take none of it back with you when you transition out of the physical form. What it'll take with you is the experiences. And if you lived your life collecting and hoarding and collecting and hoarding and overindulging in material things, no, no, no. And that can negatively influence relationships because if you have a gluttonous habit of hoarding things and that can create strain between you and your relationships around you 
and that creates a mark specifically with families, a mark on the ancestral line. Next is pride. Pride is arrogance. Pride is ego. Pride is narcissism. Those things, when it happens in relationships, uh, narcissistic abuse can really be traced back to someone being prideful in different ways. It's prideful in not necessarily in how they look, but in their beliefs. They believe that they are right in everything that they do and nothing they can do is wrong and anything you do different than what they think is right is wrong and therefore you're a bad person. Those cycles, those are cycles in ancestral lines and there are so many, we can see so many ancestral lines that have that particular cycle going on and how that can be broken is just opening your mind. The biggest thing is opening your mind, but accepting and admitting wrong, admitting when you are wrong, because no one is always right. No one, not even us elves. We're not always right because things change, constantly change. Every second things change. Anybody, anybody, any being can be wrong and that's okay. The next one is lust. <sighs> this one applied to relationships can have multiple different effects if someone is too lustful for for things and, and certain appearances and people that we clearly as elves do not understand that desire and no being does except humans when they're in the physical 3d form understand that that can affect relationships and cheating and, and um, infidelity and in uh, all of those bad things that influence relationships falling apart. But how that can work in family dynamics, because this is about ancestral healing, a lot of it can happen if somebody was left for somebody else, that, that somebody else's lust for somebody else can have a mark on your ancestral lines, especially if that person was a member of your biological family. That is, things that leave marks. Lust is also not necessarily physical. It's also other things. So being too lustful, like a thirst for knowledge, just wanting to work, 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 and learn as much as you can. That doesn't sound like a bad thing, but when it takes away from the time that you spend with your family, the time that you spend developing connections, the time that you spend understanding who you are, that's where it becomes negative. When you're just focusing on just absorbing knowledge from everywhere else and not trying to figure out your inner knowledge and your inner truth, that is where it becomes negative. Next one is sloth. This can be laziness in spending time with family, somebody who just doesn't care, that can be a mark on your ancestral lines if you have a cycle of people who just don't care, of parents who just don't seem to care. They just sit back and do nothing. That can be something that's on your ancestral lines. With sloth, another thing is getting trapped in the cycle of the 3D world. So this is the pattern cycle of the 3D world that pretty much every ancestral line has this unless you're from an ancestral line of people who focus on self-employment and stay out of the system and that is that is completely different then you won't have this mark but those who kind of get trapped in the day-to-day -day, i wake up i brush my teeth i eat food i go to work i come back home i go to bed i get maybe one or two days off i have to walk the dog i have to do this that that is sloth even though it doesn't seem like sloth it's not caring enough, being too lazy to look for something more than the mundane life. What is left? Oh, wrath. Wrath and jealousy. Anger can, and anger has so many different levels and wrath is obviously one of the worst. In relationship dynamics, I'm sure most people and even our communicator, we can hear her say, yep, 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 we know anger in relationships. The constant fighting, the constant disagreement, the constant rage that can turn into something very bad very quickly. Anger, anger issues, and a lot of people get irritated. 
a lot and a lot of this has to do with your soul is getting irritated with the life that you're living because it's not your purpose and that can manifest into different things in your life with anger it it's coming from within all of these things are coming from within but particularly wrath is coming from within and a lot of times it's because you're angry at something about yourself or angry about something in your ancestral lines so apply to anc ancestral lines there can be a lot of anger there if you broke away you can feel this weight on your chest of people being disappointed in you and then you fall back and you go back into those patterns and that's actually a very common cycle of people breaking away and going back because they feel this weight of disappointment and manipulative anger on them that no that is hard to see um but as you all know, we cannot interfere in those things because you all have free will um, unless you ask for help, which by coming to this video, you are asking for our help. So we are helping you with jealousy. This is in the form of possession when it comes to family and relationships. You want to possess the other person. The other person wants to possess you. You get angry and upset and jealous if that person wants to do things outside of what you want. And in family dynamics, that happens a lot. And jealousy can be applied to the possession of keeping you trapped in the box of tradition. And not necessarily that it is a bad thing to have traditions. Just that if you break away, it's, no, you belong in this. You have to stay here. You're this and this person's kid. You have to do this. That's how jealousy and anger can really come through in relationship dynamics. Mm -hmm.